would keep me waiting I would wait a lifetime In tricky situations I will be a lifeline Nobody's meant to be fighting alone That's why I'm taking you home I never felt something like this before, no Keep coming back for your time after time Maybe I'm losing my mind But I know I'll never leave you behind, no Baby, I got you When you feel like falling I'll be there to prove diamonds thank you so much for tuning into the duchess of success podcast don't forget to hit that like button subscribe if you haven't and comment on the video to help the algorithm find us it is my pleasure to bring you all of the royal tea honey and if you would like to donate to the channel please check out the links in the description box all of your donations help to keep the channel running thank you for your support and remember you don't need a crown to be royal we are all queens Hello everyone, happy Saturday, long time no see, because I was taking a bit of a break, needed to just recharge, it's just been relentless actually the last couple of weeks, just day after day, one thing after another, <laughs> and it can get really, really just tiring it can weigh on you so i needed that break and thank you so much for allowing me to have that break so let's get straight into it uh, who's this edalina oliveira from portugal hello from portugal obrigada thank you for joining us Actually, this time last year, I was getting ready to leave Portugal, leave Lisbon, and go to Georgia. How crazy is that? Time flies. Time flies. Right. What shall we start with today? A whole lot of mess. 
But let's just remind ourselves, before I get into the mess today, let's just remind ourselves of why the mess continues to occur. It continues to occur because Harry and Meghan have moved on. Harry and Meghan are successful. Harry and Meghan are on the up and up. Harry and Meghan have multiple projects coming up and multiple projects behind them ever since they left that crazy institution. And they have to continue to paint this narrative that Harry and Meghan are failing. Harry and Meghan should come back begging and pleading for forgiveness. Harry and Meghan have done nothing. The only individuals in this situation who deserve an apology are Harry and Meghan, especially Meghan. I think that the reason the press have really amped up the attacks, and the attacks are always there, but I think in the last couple of weeks, is because, number one, they are really losing control of the narrative. And I'm going to show you why I think this is as we go on in the podcast. And Harry said that losing control of the narrative was always the UK tabloids' number one fear. And I also think with some people in the palace, some people who like to call the Daily Fail and the Sun and leak, I also think that they are realising that they're losing control of the narrative. Or maybe they don't realise it, and they're completely delusional, but they're still certainly jealous of Harry and Meghan's success. And the fact that now, the royal household is being compared to North Korea, and nobody trusts them. Almost as soon as Kate's video went live, the picking apart began. And that is their own fault. Where you are not truthful and authentic, you create a vacuum. And at the end of the day, all they have to do is be transparent. And they can't do that because clearly there's a lot to hide. And that's another reason why, and we've seen this in the past, why I think the attacks have really amped up the last couple of weeks, not just against Harry Meghan, but also against the Squad. There is really something not right happening behind the scenes. I think it's absolute chaos. And it's also why they are now trying to blame all of this hoopla la on China, Russia, and Iran. They want us to believe that Xi Jinping and Putin were in the WhatsApp chat saying that Kate was getting a BBL. Let's just be honest about something. People love gossip about the British royal family, period. They always have. There's something about an institution that is meant to be a fairy tale just falling apart at the seams and behaving like some Shakespearean Kardashian drama. That's literally what you have mixed into one with the British royal family. And also, people who may not even necessarily follow the royals are very much aware, at the very least, of you know all of the mess with, with Diana and how they treated her and how that ended. So between uh, people's suspicion about this institution, how they treat people, especially how they treat, treat women, and just people's general thirst for gossip, that's what really led to th- this conversation blowing up. People who don't even typically follow the royals now joining in the conversation, whether it's online or in person. But it was very much organic. The idea that, you know, China, Russia or Iran or any, you know, type of uh, any foreign nation is interested to the point where they would release bots online is ridiculous. You had this in the Telegraph, Whitehall figures for hostile states have helped to fuel wild conspiracy theories in an attempt to destabilize nation. If I was a foreign country wanting to destabilize the United Kingdom, you know what I would do? I would leave the UK politicians to do what they have been doing, and that is be so corrupt. I wouldn't have to start rumors 
about Kate Middleton online to destabilize the United Kingdom. I think that um, the royal household has also realized that people are just no longer that precious about the royals. And I think that's, that's shaking them. They try to spin one person leaving flowers outside. I don't know what this building is, actually. Is it Windsor or the Tower? One bunch of flowers. They tried to spin it into a modest apology. One person, the whole nation was apologizing. This is part of the whole guilt trip that they're trying to put us on um, for questioning what's going on with Kate. And let's just be clear, um, nobody, absolutely, I have not seen anyone really you know, wish Kate ill or, or wish anything bad on Kate. We're just wondering why we have not been given transparency from this institution. That's what a lot of this conversation has been about. But the palace and the press are trying to spin it into something else. And, you know, we should all feel bad and we should all apologize. Apologize for what? We're not apologizing for anything. We know what this institution is like. And because us, the British people, pay for this institution to run, we should have the right to ask questions. The tabloid editor said it themselves. They put, you know, uh, we pay, they post. Granted, nobody wants a cancer-stricken Kate to post. We just wanted to know if this lady was even alive. Because we've seen five different versions of Kate in the last few weeks. And let's just be clear. The two people in the United Kingdom who control um, the majority of the media, two-thirds of the UK print newspaper and online, are Lord Rothermere and Rupert Murdoch. These two men are not Chinese, Russian, or Iranian. Lord Rothermere's Daily Mail, the Daily Fail, and General Trust, which owns the Mail, Metro, and I titled. Metro, by the way, is one of the, it, no, it is the largest freely distributed newspaper in the country. It's the largest national newspaper group in the UK in terms of revenue, daily circulation, and the combined monthly reach of its new brands, print readership, and online traffic. And these two individuals and their papers have been spreading all kinds of lies, nasty malicious lies and vitriol against the Sussexes for the last seven years. But let a couple people speculate about what the Kate's getting a BBL and all of a sudden China, Russia and Iran are behind the spread of conspiracy theories. I mean, I, I just laughed when I saw this. Are you serious? Oh, that was, that was Windsor Castle. Okay, so Windsor Castle is, is where people uh, go to visit. So tourists go to visit. And you only had one bunch of flowers? I'm wondering if that was even just put there by the news or someone in media. And it is actually the UK media that are partly responsible for all the issues that are going on in the monarchy. I truly believe that a lot of these tabloid writers, they absolutely relish in the drama. They love it. I saw a video, I'm, I'm still looking for it, if anybody has it, the one of Emily Andrews sitting there like a high school teenager gossip, gossiping about what was happening in the playground. But these people want to um, fashion themselves as real journalists. They're nothing but gossips. Just admit you are. Stop trying to pass yourself off as some le legitimate journalist, you know, giving uh, the public important news. Yes, Sharon, you can fool some of the people some of the time, but you can't fool all the people all the time. And now that they have been branded as North Korea light, well, they're not fooling anyone. And people are going to question anything, everything now. Now, there are still questions about whether or not Kate's uh, video is, is real or AI. At this point, I don't really feel, um, I, I'm not actually sure either way. I'm not 100% convinced that it's fake. I'm not 100% convinced that it's real. I've, you know, I've heard both sides of the argument. Um, at this point, until I see Kate in public, 
I'm not going to have anything else to say about what's going on. Um, the Spanish journalist who first reported that she was in a coma, she went on a show the other day. But what was interesting, thank you to the squaddies, by the way, who actually watched it. It was a 35-minute video. And uh, some of you actually translated what was being said in the comment section. Uh, thank you for that. So let's we'll go to um, what some of you were saying. Uh, Miranda Rios, you said she makes no mention about her reporting on Kate being in a coma, and she wasn't asked about it either. Um, they talk about the royal crisis. She didn't say anything we haven't heard. She didn't mention the coma. Um, she, she also mentioned that Harry didn't leave. He ran, and the Queen knew why. According to her, she knows more information about that. She's not saying. Harry did not leave voluntarily. He left out of fear. Indeed. Um, she's also saying that the video could only be done by BBC. They chose not. They chose to release it on Friday for a variety of reasons. Monarchy and government worried about the lack of workers. Mentioned regency may be required if William doesn't step up. This is something that's actually been circulating a lot um, in the press about uh, Charles not being confident in William's leadership for reasons obvious. I mean, the you know Harry alluded to William's uh, violent temper. And many of the royal rotorats have also alluded to it in their writing. And then you've got him swaying like a flag and dropping pins. Can't even put a pin on someone's jacket. There's no way this guy is ready to be king. And then rumours of his affair. Rumours, by the way, that the British tabloid press started themselves. Don't ever let them forget. Uh, don't ever let them let you forget that. It was Dan Wooten and uh, Richard Eden. I don't think I have it on a slide. Maybe I'll have it for the next podcast, but it was Dan Wooten and Richard Eden who started those rumours. That wasn't us. Another interesting thing about the video um, that people have been mentioning is that William isn't in the video. And also in Catherine's statement, it was just her cipher on the top of the statement. It wasn't any type of joint statement. Which, okay, I guess you could say, well, it's, you know, Catherine speaking. So, okay, let's let's just take that out for a second. But William, it seems, has just been very distant throughout this whole thing. She was apparently meant to have been in the hospital when they said that she was, and he only went to visit her once for 15 minutes. Camilla, by comparison, went to visit Charles three times. And what's interesting is, during this time, you have had this palace-approved Tatler cover story, where Kate was barely mentioned. And in retrospect, I, I agree with Kaiser here, it's, it's rather interesting. And I also find it very interesting that they chose, I mean, do these people really actually hate William? They chose a picture from the failed Caribbean tour. I don't know what's going on. Also, these two, the Middletons, are you silent or have you been silenced? Which one? And uh, these are some of the attacks being levied at the Sussex squad. Now, I mean, they've, they've attacked us a couple of times um, in the past, but for some reason, it's just really amped up this week. Um, you had Dan Whatnot, um, who mentioned us once, the hit <laughs> I don't, uh, I don't have that clip, but and um, we definitely put some sour grapes in his mouth. He hates us, or they all do. But why did the Sussex squad start? It started because we saw what was happening to Meghan, and we saw where this could go. And we were not going to allow them bully this woman in peace. Absolutely not. I believe that the British tabloids wanted a repeat of history to sell their papers. We weren't going to allow that. Um, I also do believe that they've been planting fake accounts, 
to make us look bad. I think they've been trying to infiltrate the squad. Um, there was a so-called student journalist that went around um, trying to uh, interview the squad some time back. And she was found out uh, to be working for a tabloid. And in fact, in the last week, one of the editors from, uh, oh, sorry, writers from The Sun was trying to get, get into the DMs of squaddies. Um, and then now all of a sudden you have all these pieces um, in the tabloids, particularly The Sun. And The Sun, um, The Sun can actually take a bow. Because they did something this week that just got everybody cackling and howling. They posted an article criticizing the squad. And in that article, um, they make mention of Tina and Michelle from the original Sussex Squad podcast. Um, they've also continuously uh, gone after Boozy, but in, on this occasion, they've actually you know, put him here in picture. Um, they make mention to the fact that he was obviously in Harry and Meghan's Netflix documentary. Um, and, you know, Boozy has been uh, very vocal about the online vitriol levied against Meghan. And he also produced a report um, that showed that you had a, a large concentration of hate, but it was coming from um, a small group of accounts and uh, also... Um, it looked into the you know the demographic of that particular group and why they were targeting Megan. So he's done some uh, incredible work, kind of exposing a lot of the online bullying. So that's why they've gone after him. I also think you know, being a black man, it was just very easy for them to put him as the face of the squad because it would trigger certain people in the Sun's readership. However. The overwhelming majority of the squad, 95%, are actually women. And this movement was started by women, and particularly women of colour. So they've, But they've now decided to make him the face of the squad. Because the truth is, there's no one real leader of the squad. We've always just been our own individual people who came together you know, because of these two people, Harry and Meghan, and because of what we saw was was going on. We don't have a leader, um, and it's not Christopher Boozy, but Christopher has done great work um, exposing the online trolls, and that's why then, you know, really going after him. I mean, it's not just the sun. Multiple tabloids have written um, about Christopher and have gone after him. But back to this, back to this article in The Sun. So they mentioned Tina and Michelle. They also mention the uh, um, a squaddy Instagram. Now, the particular Instagram that they're actually talking about is, I think it's Sussex underscore squad. Um, and let me just say, I actually watched the video that I, I believe that they're referring to. And what he actually said was, he made a point that Kate was speaking in past tense regarding her illness. But then we get further down the article, and then we get to this. A blog on its main website, in, so it's talking about the Sussex Squad podcast uh, blog. By the way, for those of you who don't know, they used to have a blog. A blog on its main website ins insults Prince William's hairline in a bizarre barb, referencing the late Princess Diana, br branding him Boldilocks. It states, William is bold because... <laughs> because his mother reached down from heaven and snatched her fine Spencer jeans back. William's hairline was also snatched in the process. Exactly. And who wrote that? I wrote that. I wrote that three years ago. For some reason, the uh, blog update says three weeks ago, and it wasn't three weeks ago, it was three years ago. The Sun newspaper went to the Sussex Squad podcast blog and fished out from the depths of internet hell a blog post that I wrote three years ago. These people do not like William. Why would you post something like this from three years ago? And it, well, the answer to that question is, I think they were trying to make us look like bullies. Well, it backfired. Because you know what happened? Boldilocks has been trending ever since. 
I need to take your phones away from you all. I feel like I can never step foot in the United Kingdom again. I'll probably get sent to the tower upon arrival at the airport. And so this is the result of the Sun newspaper going back three years. And you know what I, I just find hilarious about all of this? Uh, that Victoria woman from the Sun has decided to make herself the mouthpiece for Kensington Palace. And she and her writers are now responsible for this. Um, if you want to go and read my, you know, full post, you can just search for the title there. Um, now, of course, the entire article wasn't, you know, wasn't just. This was actually in response to that, you know, world's sexiest bold man a tweet that went viral about William. Um, but I, I maintain it is because Diana snatched her fine Spencer jeans back. And William is no longer a prince in a magical fairy tale. He is boldy locks with his three hairs. And every time he opens his mouth, that hairline just moves further and further backwards. And yes, in a few months, it will be greeting the peng penguins in Antarctica. Because William just has no sense of self-awareness. This was also around the time um, when uh, William said, what did he say? He said that there's no war in Europe. And he was just making gaff after gaff after gaff. No sense of self-awareness. Shows up to a Ukrainian uh, refugee shelter and says that I'm here to give you a smile here and there. I'm sorry we can only come and give words and comfort, but we're, we are thinking about you the whole time and we really care about what's going on. So Sometimes it's that's more than financial. Yeah. Well, if we can give you the old smile here and there, that's important. So, you know. mm -hmm. the, the odd smile here and there, that's important too. I know you just fled a whole war, but a smile here and there is important too. William is not ready to be king. He's absolutely not ready to be king. And I I feel that... I actually do think that Charles's illness is worse than what they're telling us. Um, let me just find... Yes, here. Obviously, he's going through treatment. Um, you can see the right hand there, not looking great. They released one picture from his Maundy service uh, day message. But they decided to go with audio um, for the message. For the Commonwealth Day at the Abbey, he was not present. Only Camilla and William were. And I said then, something's going on. He's a lot more ill. Granted that any type of therapy or treatment he's having you know will make him weaker um but i do think that it's it's a lot more serious than what they uh, want us to know and it, it it's looking more and more um like the panic that's going on is because they know what could be coming and that william could be king uh that Nost that nostradamus prediction um, could be right. And William's just not ready. And William uh, clearly is not invested in his marriage anymore. And while all this is going on, you've got Camilla playing chess, or at least trying to. I mean, if, if, you've, got, if you've got Crumbling Kingdom, I don't know what it is that... I don't know what um, Camilla thinks that she's going to gain at this point. You've got a crumbling kingdom, and yet she's still trying to play Machiavellian games. But here she is, wearing a wasp and a bee pin. Shout out to the squaddies who spotted this. Now, what significance does this have? Let's go back to Prince Harry's spare, in which he said, I'd spent my life dealing with courtiers, scores of them, but now I dealt mostly with just three, all middle-aged white men 
who'd managed to consolidate power through a series of bold Machiavellian maneuvers. They had normal names, but they sort more easily into zoological categories. The bee, the fly, and the wasp. The bee was oval-faced and fuzzy and tended to glide around with great equanimity and poise, as if he was a boon to all living things. The fly had spent much of his career adjacent to, and indeed drawn to, S. The oath full of government and the media and wormy entrails. He loved it, grew fat on it, rubbed his hands in glee over it. So who's referring to the courtiers? Uh, I believe one of them was Edward Young. Can't remember the names of the others. Um, and here Camilla is with a bee and a wasp on her coat. So is this meant to tell us that the courtiers are on side with Camilla? Or whatever Camilla's agenda is? I mean, that's, you know, if that makes you feel good, darling, then fine. What does it mean in the wider context of the world? Absolutely nothing. Kim Kardashian's behind is still more popular and more famous and more followed than you. This institution has not modernized and so therefore it will not survive. And the only two people who could have helped it continue. You chase them and their family away and you continue to put them in danger. Yes, yeah, certainly, there is no leader of the Sauce Squad, never has been. And that's why I think they have struggled to tear us apart. But it's, it, it is not by um, accident. They struggled to tear us apart and they've also um, uh, struggled uh, to infiltrate. And they needed to give the squad uh, a face to get people to hate the squad. And out of the hundreds of thousands of us, the overwhelming majority of us are women from all different backgrounds that they chose a black man. And put his face all over the Sun newspaper, we know why. <sighs> you, were, you all in the comment section laughing about body loves. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> it's really He's searching for his three hairs and his porridge. No shade to bold men. Listen, join the Rock Johnson. Sexy as hell. Stanley Tucci, very stylish. There's nothing more sexy, in my opinion, than a man with no follicles but lots of charisma. But William, we're short on the follicles and have we have absolutely no charisma. That man needs therapy and he needs help. He's not ready to be king. If he is allowed to become king in the state that he's in, he, he he's going to lose it. Okay. Um, next thing I wanted to mention, just briefly, this whole thing with uh, Diddy. First of all, I hope that Diddy gets his uh, long overdue karma. There have been rumors about this guy for, for, for decades. Um, in a lawyer's document, a Prince Harry's name was mentioned. Despite the fact that Harry and Diddy have only met once briefly for the Diana um, concert, the memorial concert that they had. Many other celebrities also performed here, um, met the princes backstage, and it was both of them that were there for this concert, this memorial concert for their mother. But look at what the Telegraph did in their tweet. They cropped out William from the photo. So it's just Diddy, Harry, and Kanye. I think what the um, uh, lawyer documents were alluding to was that Diddy would use his connections with famous people to lure in others. And that's where uh, Harry's name got mentioned. But is, is, is Harry involved in any way with Diddy? No. And I actually think it's very um, shady and irresponsible for Harry's name to be in there. It's like when um, Virginia Graffray's lawyer tried to drag Meghan into the whole Prince Andrew thing. That woman had never met Andrew before she went into that family. And she probably, even when Meghan was a working royal and, and within the royal fold, she probably only met him a handful of times. 
at uh, at functions, not any private capacity. So this is very disingenuous and very irres you know, it's very irresponsible because what have the British press done? They've run with it. Of course they have. Prince Harry entangled in s trafficking lawsuit. He's not entangled in anything. His name was just mentioned very irresponsibly in lawyers' documents. And if Harry's name was mentioned, well, why wasn't William's name? Ridiculous. At a time when we should absolutely um, be holding dangerous and perverted men accountable, let's not drag perfectly innocent men, men who advocate for women, it, it, into mess like this. Because if Harry was involved in anything like this, we know that the tabloid press would have told us about it. They have been trying so hard to put Harry and Andrew in the same sentence for years. It's not happening. Because Harry has nothing to hide. Oh, this, this is what, I mean, of all, the, of all the things that have annoyed me the last couple of weeks, this one just, it, it, just my eyes rolled all the way to the back of my head because just how dare they i don't know if harry is planning on suing or if he can sue because you know the way that they word these um articles is it's very lawyer proof right so you've got prince harry named in bombshell trafficking lawsuit but they don't you know they don't say anything that could potentially um that they could be sued for. But people read the headline, they don't read the rest. And they just believe the tabloids. Anyway, um, shout out to, uh, I think this is Cloud Nugget. Was it Cloud Nugget who did this? She's absolutely hilarious on Twitter. You had <laughs> the Daily Mirror um, had this front cover. Again, Harry with Diddy and Kanye. William was there as well. So why isn't William in the picture? And then you had uh, Cloud Nugget, who did a great remix of the cover, The Daily Squad, <laughs> with William and Diddy on the cover. And then you had The Traitors, which is actually the media. Yes, indeed. And Murdoch and all of his rats. Angela Latrine, Piss Moron, Dan Whatnot. And the rest. And they these people know that they are going down. They know. It's only a matter of time. Um, I do believe that we are in the age of awakening, the old guard being, you know, questioned, the the veil being drawn back, and um the, the truth will come to light about a lot of things and a lot of, a lot of people. Right. Um, that's all I'm going to say for today. Thank you as always, everyone, for joining me. Um, as of, I think, thank you so much, Black Queen, for the three coffees. And thank you also uh, to Marina for the coffees as well. We are... Um, about I think twenty one days until I can appeal. So we're almost there. Thank you, everyone who has supported me and continues to support me. Um, you have been so generous and kind, and we're almost there. <laughs> April nineteenth is just around the corner. Okay. Um, let. See, I will just go through your comments and then we'll wrap things up. Um, yeah, Joan Hickey, um, people have been putting community notes on a lot of these false articles and false claims. If you've got community notes on Twitter, please do use it. Uh, Varga, so they keep this mess up with Harry supposedly being around. Diddy, they are cruising for another lawsuit. Indeed. I mean, William is right there. <laughs> oh, 
Yes, Pen Dizzy. 2024 is the light we have needed for a long, long time. A lot of these people are going down. Diddy, a lot of music industry people. A lot of them are going to start going down. And it's about time. Like, there's almost no music industry, Hollywood, almost no regulation whatsoever. If you've got money and power, uh, you can abuse it. And, and no one, whether you, whether you're an, you want to be an actor or a singer, nobody um, should ever show up at work and be harassed in any kind of way. And it's interesting. I feel like people recognize that when it's any other industry. But I don't know. Maybe it's because of the celebrity element. People don't necessarily recognize that abuse of power um, in in Hollywood and, and music industry. And, and people just tend to you know blame the victim. Oh, but you wanted to be famous. Oh, but you wanted to have money. But at the end of the day, if if you're an executive and and you're in a position of power and you abuse your um, power, the blame lies on the person who abused their power. People should have the right to follow their dreams without wondering whether or not they're going to be taken advantage of. So I hope if if anything, you know, people are are, are exposed. And we can have, you know, a media um, that's run by much better people than what we have now. All right. Uh, I'm going to end things there. Thank you, as always, everyone. Please enjoy the rest of your weekend. We'll see what news comes tomorrow, uh, whether or not I do a podcast. But if not, enjoy the rest of your weekend and I'll see you soon. Ciao. If you would keep me waiting, I would wait a lifetime. In tricky situations, I will be a lifeline. To be fighting alone That's why I'm taking you home I never felt something like this before, I know Keep coming back for your time after time Maybe I'm losing my mind But I know I'll never leave you behind, no Baby, I got you When you feel like falling I'll be there to prove, yeah That baby, I got you No matter the distance No matter the rules, yeah Baby, I got you
Hello, my royal diamonds. Thank you so much for tuning into the Duchess of Success podcast. Don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't, and comment on the video to help the algorithm find us. It is my pleasure to bring you all of the royal tea, honey. And if you would like to donate to the channel, please check out the links in the description box. All of your donations help to keep the channel running. Thank you for your support. And remember, you don't need a crown to be royal. We are all queens.